Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming over for this session, the last one for today, but the first day of the conference. I'm Yuri Dekovny. I'm director of solutions architecture at Sayera, and we will talk, let's guess, we will talk security, right? But we will talk not only security, we will dive into the cutting edge. We will talk about generative AI security. Uh, how many of you are dealing with securing generative AI workloads on a daily basis? Awesome, I see, I see hands. And with securing data in relation to generative AI workloads. I pretty much see the same hands here, which is, which is expected because data today in our digital world is the crown jewel of every organization and everything revolves around the data. So, another question. Is any of you find yourself in that situation when your businesses are running 1,000 miles per hour and they are building these amazing generative AI chatbots that are increasing productivity, making our life easier, opening new business opportunities, all that amazing stuff, but you are the person who needs to figure out how to secure it. Yes, and imagine the most powerful of these agents are dealing with the data. And the most sensitive data that you need to secure. To understand how we should approach data security in generative AI, let's step back in time a little bit. Do you remember when our biggest worry was to secure an all good three-tier web application? And the biggest attack vector we were thinking about was SQL injection, all right? But why threat actors were so obsessed with SQL injection? Because they were hunting for our data. But back then, the data, sorry, back then the data was in a single database. We knew where it is, it was rarely changing, and we know what we are protecting, and we had the set of tools, right? We could apply, apply web application firewall, we were uh, embedding the input sanitization, and all those good techniques, right? Good times, like we know what to do, we had the tools, it was a clear cut what to do. If we are coming back today to the today's world, and we look at the generative AI agent built, for example, on Amazon Bedrock, it has maybe some data in the agent instructions, possibly. It has data in the vector database, and it might be built on the custom model that was trained or fine-tuned on your very data. And your agent is also accessing or even updating data in the real time. So this picture is way more complex already and we need to understand what to do with it. So if we apply the same mindset that we were using for years to protect against signal injection here, and we will try to protect against prompt injection that we are talking about all the time, and we will throw an AI gateway that will do this nice prompt and completion filtering, and we will implement some guardrails, that will not be enough. Don't get me wrong, like we need to do all this, right? We need those guardrails. But there are two key differences between the previous world and this world. And one of them is pretty obvious. It's way harder to filter and uh, to analyze the natural language comparing to the structured input like, like SQL or structured forms. But the second one is even more important. In that previous world, we had a single entity which was untrusted, which was the user, and it was outside of our application. So if we filter everything here, everything is good. Our life is good. Now we have another untrusted entity that sits in the heart of our LLM application, and that's the model itself. And this very model is interacting with our most sensitive data across this uh, architecture diagram. 
So this is why we need to definitive controls around what data used for training, what data included in the knowledge bases, and what is the data that AI agents are accessing via these tools in the real time. And today it's not a simple answer what is the data and where the data. Data is scattered across environments. Data lives in different data stores and formats. Data is moving and data is changing and we are generating more and more data. So to formulate the risks of generative AI on little higher level, we probably can put them in these four major buckets. First one, model and data ingestion. I'll be using sensitive proprietary information in our training pipelines. Uh, do we know what is flowing into our RAG data stores and through these pipelines? Next, operational risks. Is data access properly governed when agents are accessing external data sources downstream via the SQL connectors or APIs, for example? Do we have agent deployed in a, let's call it shadow IT, outside of organizational controls? Model behavior. Can model risk proprietary or sensitive information because of overfitting of memorization? Can we verify how the decision has been made by the model? And finally, the regulatory and compliance questions, if we can pr prove compliance to these frameworks and can we audit who is accessing the data through these systems, when and for what use case. So all these questions are not isolated. They are deeply interconnected. And they all, again, revolve a, around the single thing, the data. So to address all this from the little more structured perspective, it's helpful to look at them from the OWASP plans. And OWASP Top 10 for LLM is a security framework designed to highlight the most critical risks with LLM applications. It's also useful to take a look at Mitre Atlas, which focuses on more documented and low-level attack techniques against AI ML systems, but we don't have time to address it in this session. It, we just mention it here and come back to the OWASP framework. So, here is the map of these vulnerabilities to the different components of modern LLM application. Starting down the bottom from the training and uh, data sanitization pipelines, going to the ingestion to the rack vector stores, agents themselves and tools that are accessing the data uh, downstream. Each of these components can introduce its own risks. And if we zoom into the subset of LLM vulnerabilities we may have, what is the common trend between this? They all deal with the data. Prompt injection, sensitive information disclosure, data poisoning, embedding weaknesses. Each of these introduce the attack surface, risking your data to be exposed to unauthorized user or leaked by your LLM application. So we need to recognize it's all about the data. LLM security, it's around the data security. So how do we secure it? Here's some, again, some, not all, high-level security controls that you must have. First, you need to ensure that no sensitive or unauthorized data ends up in your training data sets. From the identity perspective, you need to limit not just who accesses that LLM application, but also authorize each and every request downstream when agent is calling your data sets and use the end user identity for that, not the LLM identity. Your RAG vector data sets should uh, enforce the fine grade access control or employ the tenant restrictions for different use cases, not mixing them together. And you need to monitor and filter what goes into the model, what comes out, especially to prevent sensitive data leakage. All this is good, right? All understood. But here is the thing. To enforce these controls, you need to know the data. And this is why 
the deep knowledge of the data through classification and data context, such as data ownership, residency, must be the foundation of AI security strategy. You cannot protect what you don't know, and you cannot defend and control what you cannot see. To prevent sensitive information from being leaked or exposed unintentionally by your LLM applications, data knowledge here is the cornerstone. And it's not only about the content of the data, it's again the context, where the data is stored, who is the owner, what is the data residency, is it identifiable data or not? So all this context is the foundation. Those factors are critical to protecting AI systems, not only from the technical threats, but obviously from regulatory and compliance risks as well. So now let's talk a little bit about Sayera. So Sayera Data Security Platform gives you data admins, data owners, full visibility and control over their data. We start from connecting to the environment via API, and we automatically inventory and discover the data stores. Either it's RDS or Snapshot, S3 Bucket, Redis, uh, DynamoDB, or even SQL Server running on the EC2 instance. We find them and we classify them. How we do that? We have hundreds of classifiers, traditional and most importantly AI-based classifiers, that discover sensitive data in minutes and enrich it with the ownership identity and business context. We also look into the compliance frameworks violations and we link this data to the identities who or what can access this specific data. Most importantly for this talk, we also looking into the specific AI use cases when AI applications or frameworks have access to the specific data and you can define your policies based on that. I mentioned that we use AI to classify the data uh, and our AI native classification can be broken into three major pieces. First, we have these data elements in unstructured files like words and PDF files scattered across all environments. So we find them, we look into the specific data elements like SSN, uh, address, name, also industry specific jargon, so maybe something that is very specific for your company. We will learn it and we will present it as a finding or as a context. The second is file level classification where we take a more holistic approach not on the specific data elements, but the file at whole. And the last one is structured learned when we use ML to group this data and to find the data classes uh, that you have in your structured data stores and structured files. So when you build your data security strategy, and this is what our numerous customers of us are doing today, you start by discovering and classifying your data, making this precise picture of what you have. When Sayera AI native no-touch classification uh, helps you to gain this visibility in, into your data, where the data lives, and what context around it, you know how to protect this data. So the next step, you use this intelligence to enforce least privilege business driven access model. Not just for human identities, but importantly for non-human ones, so NHIs, that your AI pipelines or AI workloads are using. So when you uh, for example, when you define the specific roles that used by your uh, SageMaker or Bedrock model customization jobs or Bedrock knowledge base ingestion job, you apply these techniques and assign this role specifically to access, based, uh, to, to access to the data based on the sensitivity and based on the context. So, in other words, if you have this foundational knowledge of the data, you can define and enforce these policies. 
Now let's dive deep into some architectural examples. Let's imagine you are customizing your model on Amazon Bedrock. For Sierra customers that uh, uh, is training their models on their data sets, it's very easy to enforce that only specific data is getting into the uh, pipeline workflow. First, Sierra will classify the data, and then you instrument the model customization workflow with Sierra data, either using the tags, data sensitivity tags on the resources, or directly using the API and getting this rich metadata there. And your model, uh, model customization workflow makes decisions based on this data sensitivity. And if the data changes, Sierra will rescan the environment, next workflow run, if unsanctioned data landed in one of these data stores, it will be stopped from being ingested into the training data set automatically. Simple, automated, enforceable, auditable. Next example is knowledge-based ingestion workflow. Same thing, Sierra classifies the data, your workflow uses either tags on the data stores or it interacts directly with Sierra and getting this information into authorization, what data is getting into your, into your RAG data store. Again, enforcing the gov gov governance policies automatically and across your pipelines. And once you trained your model and you built your knowledge base, don't stop there. While building your agent, enforce the same data-centric controls in runtime when your agent tools are accessing the data. Make your tools aware of this end-user identity and authorize each and every single request to the data downstreams, but do it based on deep, extensive knowledge of your data from Sierra. Instrument this authorization again against the data classes that we found, against the data sensitivity. We don't have time for the full demo, but I took a couple of screenshots from the platform. It's very easy on the platform to get the uh, identities that Bedrock uh, is using and to access the data, and you can track them down to the specific data that these identities can access and assess this use case. Is it the right use case for this specific data? And you can drill down into specific data classes, context data ownership, and you can either use console or better, again, you will uh, embed it in your MLOps pipelines using APIs, for example. And a couple of takeaways. Start your data classification, uh, start, start your AI strategy uh, from data classification. Inventory, discover, classify, and label your data first. Get the knowledge of your data. Then define the data usage access and retention policies based on this sensitivity knowledge. Sanitize the data. Make sure that only the data appropriate for this use case lands into pipeline, but embed it in your MLOps pipeline. Do it continuously. Rescan the data because your data is most likely changing today. Your tomorrow pipeline run may be different. You need to enforce that you're not getting wrong data on the next time. Use classification to enforce least privilege access. When you build your models, when you build your knowledge bases, but also when agentic AI is accessing your data stores. And log everything, monitor everything, and monitor for abnormal access patterns to the data, but again, based on the data sensitivity. Look for what is important. In other words, know your data and start your data security for AI from this foundational knowledge. Thank you.